lesson, we're going to be retelling plot point two. Now, plot point two, I've highlighted here for you, is where Mila is walking to the haunted shed, okay? So Mila buttoned her mac and set off all alone. Her heart raced as she pushed between wet stalks of grass. Along the way, she discovered a small pond, some giant rhubarb and an empty bird's nest. Then, at last, she entered the deep shade beneath the chestnut trees, kicked away a wall of nettles and stood before the haunted shed. All was silent and still. So we're going to rewrite this plot point now, okay? Okay, so first of all, our targets for our learning today is going to be a, a, using a colon. So we're going to focus on our punctuation using a colon. And then we might also include the power of three in our list, okay? And also, we're going to be talking about what she touches and what she feels when she's walking to the, um, the haunted shed. Now... First of all, what I'm actually going to do, I'm not going to think about any of this so far. I'm actually going to start our um, start our paragraph off because we need to link it from our from our previous um, paragraph. Now, in our previous paragraph, what we looked at, what we were talking about, was that Mila was hesitant, but she was just about to start. Um, She'd just started to walk. She'd taken that first step, hadn't she? Okay, so what I'm going to start it off with was actually, Mila, in the actual story, Mila buttons her, her Mac up, doesn't she? So I'm just going to stop there, and I'm going to start with, she hesitated. Because remember that she's really nervous, okay? So, she hesitated. She hesitated. And buttoned. Fluorescent cardigan. Okay, now I've just added a bit more uh, description in there. Okay, now if we look at chunk one, the first thing that we're going to look at is what she's got to walk through and how she's going to walk through um, what she's walking through. Okay, and how she moves through. So here I might think of some adjectives of how actually Mila might walk through. Okay, so for example, she might jump through. Jump. Wow, she might twist. She might turn. She might hop. She might run. She might tiptoe. Okay. Now we're going to actually look at the negative sides of this because Mila is really nervous about going into the haunted shed. So if she if she was nervous would she jump through she wouldn't she wouldn't jump through all the grass and she wouldn't run through the grass but they're there to help us okay now using a colon well first of all we need to build a sentence that describes how M Mila walks to the shed okay and we're going to ad use adjectives to, to to help describe that okay so first of all what i'm going to start off with so in our sentence, I'm going to say, once ready, comma, I always need a comma, okay, she nervously waded through the, hmm, how can I describe the grass? If it's an old haunted shed and it's a new house, it could be overgrown, so I'm going to go the thick Comma, overgrown grass. Now that, ooh, I'll leave it there at the moment. Now that paints a picture in the in the in the reader's mind. But I think that we can improve this adverb here nervously. Okay, so I'm going to just go down here and I'm going to write nervously down here. Let's think of some synonyms of nerv nervously, um, anxiously. Or in the same word family, uh, tentatively, what else? dramatically. Okay, now I like tentatively, so I'm going to use tentatively in my writing, okay? So I'm going to change nervously to tentatively. Okay, now I'm going to use my comma here to introduce uh, a list of how she how she moved through the grass. So she was nervous, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, what am I gonna use? I'm gonna use twisting, uh, 
turning because she might not want to get there very quick and tiptoeing. Now, twisting, turning and tiptoeing are full stop. I actually think they might sound better with, instead of using and, just using another comma, okay? Okay, now chunk two is what she might feel. So if it's an overgrown grass, oh, if it's an overgrown um, garden, what might you feel in an overgrown garden, okay? So uh, what might you feel? You might feel, feel insects, uh, maybe snakes as well. You have little adders, okay? Um, I'll talk about long grass, it might be over, really overgrown. Um, it might be dewy if it's early in the morning, okay? Uh, wet. And then I'm going to write soggy there because I think it could be quite soggy if you walk through long grass that was soggy, okay? So, now we're going to talk about what she feels as she's walking through, as she's twisting, turning and tiptoeing, okay? So, I'm going to start with a long the way. I've taken this from the actual from the story, okay, so along the way, Mila touched, hmm, what might she touch, she might touch the long, and if it's not being cut, it might be sharp, okay, long, sharp blades of grass, now that is painting a picture in your mind, okay, so there's an expanded noun phrase there, okay? Um, oh, Mila touched all. Oh, if we if we would it would touch be a great a great verb to use, okay? I think we can change that. So I'm gonna go to my oh down here and change it. So I've got touched here. What else? So she might endure it. I don't think that that's not. She'll experience it. I don't think I'm going to use that. She felt it. I think felt's going to be the best one, okay? And we can add more information. So Mila felt the long, sharp blades of grass. What, what, what did they do? Scratch her uncovered legs. Scratch her uncovered legs. Full stop. So there's another sentence, okay? I want to talk about something else. So I might talk about it was wet. So what 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 could she feel if if it was wet? What might happen? So uh, her feet. Oops, a letter. Her feet squelched in the soggy soil. And what else can I talk about? Insects. Insects crawled. In between her toes. Okay, so it's really descriptive that is there. Now, my to end this paragraph, what I'm going to do is actually try and link it to the next plot point. Now, the next plot point is going to be where she gets to the door, opens the door, and goes inside. So, I'm going to put, I'm going to start it with a time connective. Okay, so finally, comma, she stood before. The haunted shed. Full stop. Okay. So let's reread it. She hesitated. She hesitated and buttoned up her fluorescent cardigan. Once ready, she tentatively waded through the thick, overgrown grass, twisting, turning, tiptoeing. Along the way, Mila felt the long, sharp blades of grass scratch her uncovered legs. Her feet squelched in the soggy soil, and insects crawled in between her toes. Finally, she stood before the haunted shed. Okay, so there, in we have included a colon and used the power of three when we were using our adjectives to describe how she's um, waded through the grass. Okay, and we've also spoken about what she felt. Okay, so now I would like you to produce your own paragraph, just this paragraph of plot point two, including a colon to introduce a list and... Uh, what she touches and what she feels, okay? All right, I'd like you to go off and do that for me. Thank you.